In this video, I wanna focus on left-hand comping for jazz piano. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks so much for joining me for another one of my tutorials. Left-hand comping is always one of those things that is consistent with jazz piano, whether you're playing the melody and left-hand comping or whether you're soloing with left-hand comping, it is important to know the types of chords that you should use. Now, obviously they're going to be mostly rootless voicings because when we're playing with a trio, we've got the bass player handling all of the roots and we really wanna just find nice chord voicings to play. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on the tune Corcovado, which is a Carlos Antonio Jobim composition, a very important jazz standard and definitely bossa nova. So some pretty simple voicings we're gonna do here, and I'm gonna go through the entire tune from beginning to end and show you the exact voicings that I would use when I play with the melody and also when I'm soloing. And I think what's important here is that I'm gonna give you a couple of choices here and there. I think the voicings are gonna remain pretty consistent. However, here and there, I'll just give you a couple of different choices. You can either play this chord or this chord, and I'm gonna to try to explain as much as I can about why I use these certain voicings. A little bit later on, I'm gonna actually perform the entire composition with a couple of choruses of solo on the real piano with backing track, and then I'll post a link to the sheet music and backing track that you can download and practice these voicings. All right, let's get started right now. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through Corcovado using left hand, mostly rootless voicings, and you can use this as a guide to comp with your left hand on Corcovado. Now, I'm gonna maybe give you some options here and there. It's like one voicing or another. And I'm gonna try and explain the chords as best I can. This is a really good exercise for you to go through chord by chord because if you're going to play jazz, you're gonna to have to learn how to use these types of voicings in your left hand. All right, let's get started. There is a 10 bar introduction for Corcovado and it starts off with this F minor seven. So the first thing I do there is I think about, okay, how do I cover that F minor seven? I don't really need the root because the bass is doing that. And the same thing for B flat seven. So that's a two minor seven to five seven. So one of the things that I do do is I catch the third and the seventh, which are the leading tones. So the A flat and the E flat, and I throw in a G, which is the ninth. Now, of course, on your screen, the chordy is saying that's an A flat major seventh over G, but if you put the root down, you can see that it's an F minor nine chord. So it's kind of a sparse one, but a nice chord to start off with. And then I switch to a B flat seven flat nine. Now I know that looks like an F diminished seventh, but if you put down B flat in the root, B flat seven flat nine. So this voicing right here. So we've gone from here to here. Now we're gonna tackle the E minor seven. So there's a couple of choices here. The first thing you could do is play it in root position, or you could play it in fourths. So throw out the third and stick in the 11th, which is the A natural, so like this. It's a nice voicing. And then when you get to the A minor seventh, play this voicing. Okay, without the root. And I think that's a pretty common voicing. If you actually take a look at it, you've got the seventh, ninth, third, and fifth. Pretty common. Now when you get to the D half diminished seventh chord or D minor seven flat five, there's a couple of different choices here. You can play it in root position and throw out the third and put in the 11th. So you've got this voicing here, which is really, if you put down a B flat, it's a B flat nine 13 chord. So same voicing for that as for a D minor seven flat five or a D half diminished seventh. And then G seven flat nine, also with a flat 13. And over G, 
right? Flat nine, sharp five, or flat 13. And then two five of D minor, which is E minor seven flat five, or E half diminished seventh to A seven. So here, E minor seven flat five. So this voicing to A seven with a sharp five and a flat nine. And then two more bars and we've got a two five of C minor, which is D half diminished seventh. So we've had this one before, so you can either play this, this by throwing out the third, or this voicing, which is basically the root position first inversion. To G7, flat nine, sharp five. So let me play that whole thing again, just without the root. So you've got F minor seven, to B flat seven, to E minor seven, to A minor seven, to D half diminished seventh, to G seven, to E half diminished seventh, to A seven, to D minor, or D half diminished seventh, to G7. So those are the chords without the root. Now, of course, chordy, which is the application we're using to show the chords, can't really figure out what the chord is unless the root is put down. But what I'm trying to do is explain that you're supposed to play rootless voicings when playing left hand comping. All right, let's get into the melody where we're starting off with the D7 over A. So in the left hand, you can just simply play this, which is the third, the seventh, and the fifth. If you throw down a D, you can see it's just a straight D7 chord. So the right hand is. And then A7, A flat, diminished seventh. It's really just F diminished, which is just a, an inversion of A flat diminished. And then G, G minor seven. And of course, that is got the seventh, the ninth, the third, and the fifth. And then to C seven sus, which is just a B flat chord. Okay. So again, if we put down the roots for G minor seven, and then C7 sus, C9 sus, because it has the ninth in it. And then we're going to F6, play that in root position, then F major seven. And then F minor seven. Now again, sometimes I'm putting in flat nines, like on the B flat seven, you've got this flat nine here. Okay. Just a three note voicing. A flat diminished over B flat, it looks like a B flat seven. Okay. And then we're going to E half diminished seventh. So this voicing here. Again, if that's over C, it's a C913 chord. Substitute and you get the E minor seven flat five or E half diminished seventh to A seven with a flat nine and a sharp five. So from here to here, and again, I'm putting the root down so you can read the chord and then D seven with a ninth. And then D minor nine this chord. And for the G7 flat nine, we're just doing this chord here. So the seventh, third, and the flat nine over G. And then we're doing a repeat 
to the d7 over a. a flat diminished seventh. And then we're back to the 10 bars that we did at the beginning. So E minor seven flat five to A seven to D half diminished seventh. Sorry, that should be a C up there. So what I did was I tried to keep the rootless voicings consistent throughout. I repeated several of them. Obviously there's a lot of two fives. And then when it comes to soloing, you're gonna use the same types of voicings for soloing. Okay, so whether you're playing the melody from Corcovado or whether you're soloing, the rootless voicings pretty much remain consistent. What I want to do now is actually play it for you on the piano. I'm going to move to the piano and play it with bass and drums. And then when I come back, I'll post a link to this sheet music and also the backing track.
All right, there's the performance of Corcovado in a jazz trio format. I hope you got a lot out of that. Clearly, you could see that I'm using consistently the same types of left hand voicings, not just with the melody, but with the soloing as well. Let me put a link to the sheet music and the backing track up here in the corner so that you can download that and practice these voicings and obviously with your melody and soloing. And I think it's a good idea to download that and, and get started on that. It, it definitely will help you with your left hand comping. If you have any questions about the content, you can certainly post them in the comments below. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, just hit the little bell when you do because we'll notify you of all the upcoming videos that we're making. And by the way, while you're over checking out the sheet music and backing track at jazzmental.com, just check out some of the other sheet music and backing track offerings that we have and uh, some tutorials that are going on over there as well. Thanks so much for your time. I will see you in the next video.